Hello and welcome back to another Northern Homestead Garden update. Today I want to talk about frost protection and show you some ways we do frost protection. About planting times, if it matters to plant really early or if it maybe doesn't matter all that much. And about plant location. Does it really matter where you plant what? The best way to protect plants from frost is in a greenhouse and um, especially in northern climate where our temperature can go down to 40 in, in um, winter. It is nice to have a greenhouse that would be really insulated. So this is a building that has double frame glass like insulated completely. It can get down to around zero Fahrenheit, about minus 15 Celsius, till we really, really have frost in here. Um, here are still the tower garden with the cucumbers, waiting till the weather gets warmer outside. And the same with my pumpkin like squash plants. Um, I don't rush planting out squash because squash is very, very sensitive. Uh, tomatoes do quite well in here, those are grown hydroponically and we already have quite a few really nice and big tomatoes. N no red ones yet, but we are talking May, right? So yeah, the greenhouse, a greenhouse is the best way to protect plants from frost and it works very well and, and the good thing here is too that these tomatoes will not have to be done in September. They can grow till it really freezes in here and if you add heating they can even grow till yeah, the end of the year. Our roofless greenhouse is another way to protect plants from frost. Um, it really isn't a greenhouse, it's just a cold frame, if you will, with some windows recycled that we used to build this frame. And in cold nights and during cold days, we cover the roofless greenhouse or this frame with frost uh, protection blanket. It's a very nice um, blanket that allows air circulation and also allows light to come through. So if you know the day is cool and the weather is not nice, we just leave it on all day. But as soon as the weather is nice, we take it off so that the sun can come and shine on the plants so the plants get direct sunshine comparing to a normal greenhouse the plant would never get real sunshine and we find that this really really helps the plants to grow healthy naturally and even ripen very very early and if you can see there is a little tomato already there let's see if we can bring it really close see that there it is it's end of May and we are in Alberta and this is outside so that's amazing isn't that well that was our experience that you know this roofless greenhouse or we call it back to Eden greenhouse um, has worked so so well like the windows protected from wind and the heat kind of um, stores in there so it's it's really really nice and it works amazingly we grow this plants and grow bags and we have in our blog how we sow the grow bags and how to grow and grow bags and how to water like you can find all this information at northernhomestead.com blanket not only on the roofless greenhouse we also can wrap tomatoes in the ground that are without a frame and if the weather is really cold and colder areas we would wrap around a plant like the tomato cage and you can see the plant is in there and again it's very warm and there it's kind of a little greenhouse and we can leave that on for longer so until the weather is really really nice and warm it can be on there so the tomato gets a really early good start we also use the frost blanket on our tower gardens let me get a little bit farther away so you can 
see better. So you see the towers, two of them already outside and they are um, wrapped into a frost blanket. And again, only through, uh, during nights and cold days and when the sun, the sun is out and it's nice and warm, then we take it off. So the tower gardens can get direct sunshine and um, yeah, grow very well. For those that are in warmer climates, this might seem like a lot of work that we do, but growing food in cold climate has its challenges. And um, again, we work here with the window frame and we, like this, this is, like this wall is south facing and around the corner are usually comes cold wind. So Jacob built a, a, a wall out of a recycled window and this spot in the corner will be for the tower with the cucumbers. We hope it will be really, really warm and nice for them. Another way to protect plants from frost is planting seeds directly in the ground under a glass jar. And if you have never seen that, you might be wondering how that could work. In this case, the seeds are not up, those are zucchinis. But you can see that the, the jar has built up some moisture and it's kind of raining in there and that's because the sun's shining on it and it's really warm warming up the soil and making germination quicker and i will leave on the jar and the plant is out and the weather is really really nice so um I don't worry so much about overheating because of this cycle in there that the moisture builds up and it rains. And this works also very well if you have a sudden snow and you need to protect some plants. Here's a picture. So yeah, glass jars might look funny in the garden, but they really work well. And as you see here too, another little tip um, it looks like something is planted around the zucchini plant and that's true it's spinach I always plant spinach around zucchinis because the time till the zucchini will be big um, they can grow and be harvested and so I don't need extra space for any spinach now let's talk a little bit about planting times. Does it really matter when you plant what? Um, here is the bed that will be for the uh, squash that is still in the greenhouse. And um, I hope we can plant them out this week. But you see the bed has been used for early crops and I really grow really really early crops in there. Those are spinach and this is spinach that we planted last year. And if you plant spinach in the fall, it's important to get it going before the frost. And then next spring it just grows again. And then the other spinach is spinach that I planted early, really, really early, March I think, under row cover. And um, yeah, all of it is growing very well. And so, and it will be done till the squash comes out. Another plant to consider to plant early is Peas. These peas have been planted on April 10 and you can see like if I measure, you know, it's it's more than six inches already. So it's it's a really nice healthy plant now at the end of May. Here are more peas that I planted on May 3 and if you compare the size, like there is no comparison even question often comes up is it really worth to plant potatoes early so we tried it these potatoes have been planted on April 10th and it was very nice here like it was unusual warm for April 10th nevertheless the potatoes did not come up so it took a long long time some of them are growing nicely now but some of them as you see they're just 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 coming so here's another bed of potatoes that I planted about a month later than the other ones. And as you can see, they are coming to let me get the sunshine. So uh, I 
don't have those nice or bigger plants, like a few of them, like I have the other bed. But really, the difference is not worth talking about. I'm <laughs> guessing in a few weeks you will not be able to tell that ones were planted about a month earlier than the other ones. So it's really not worth it to plant potatoes so early. I often see gardens planted on the north side of trees or a building and I just wonder maybe people don't know that it really does make a difference where you plant your garden and I want to show you a um, cabbage plant um, here this one is growing in a pot and it's a very nice sunny location like it gets all the morning sun and um, even yeah till it does not get the afternoon sun but it has, gets a lot of morning sun and look at the size and look at how beautiful it is and here if I do size comparison like this leaf um, yeah it's it's more than six inches tall and it's, it's a beautiful plant growing here in the sun and here at another location we have the same plants planted at the same time and uh, those are red cabbage too but they have partial shade and if you look at the size comparison like if i put my little six inch on it um you can't even see it like it's it's about half the size comparing to the other one and it doesn't look as healthy and even the color is different and i'm really considering to replant them to a better location because really it's not enough sun here and you see what a difference so if your garden doesn't really grow well it might be because you don't have enough sunshine because in our northern area we need full sun if we can or at least mining sun so this should be it for this month's garden update here are a few of the flowers that are blooming and i love flowers so it's very very nice thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you want and visit our blog at northernhomestead.com